ברוך השם, נזכיר, יש את ההבדל, ברוך השם, שבת שלום, welcome, hi, I'm David Cromer, and welcome to the ministry through Jewish eyes. Today, before we get started, we like to give a few reminders. Every time that glitch happens, Ariel, I always get, ooh, it stopped, but it doesn't stop. Today, before we get started, but it did pause there for a second. Today, before we get started, I'd just like to give a few reminders uh, that we do meet every second and fourth Saturday of the month on Facebook Live, and we will be on YouTube as well, uh, live at 9 a.m. Eastern time, as we are today, and we also do, right, Ariel, a yes. Shabbat candle lighting every Friday night via Zoom, and we also do a Torah portion. So if you're interested, please go down below on this Facebook page. There should be a link and the Zoom number should be there or go to the website through Jewish Eyes. And speaking of the website through Jewish Eyes, if any of you out there are interested in getting through Jewish Eyes newsletter, finding out what we're about, or you just want to connect, send your questions to, please go to through JewishEyes.org. Again, through JewishEyes.org. Today, family, again, I have my brother... From another mother joining me again today to finish up, to have a conclusion after finding the truth. Um, considering, listen, last week, right, Ariel, we yes. were hit with so many questions, uh, emails and messages on people wanting to know questions on, you know, about the Sabbath. And, and, and I want to just say one thing right before we get started. Come a little closer. I want you to yeah, okay. okay. there you go. Okay. Get close to me, brother. <laughs> um, before we get started, you know, and I really have to say this. I get tons of questions and email to me almost every day. And I do believe full heartedly, and please, and I hope this doesn't stop you from sending those questions, but I do believe that a lot of these questions that a lot of people are sending me, they know that they already know the answer. I really feel in my heart that they just want somebody to publicly say it what they would really want to say so if that is you too please continue because i volunteer that i will be publicly saying your questions live on uh, facebook and youtube but um to get back to the topic after finding the truth uh, if you didn't see the first one please go to this page and go to our uh, our title column after finding the truth uh, meaning is, once you realize that the commandments, God's commandments are forever until uh, heaven and earth uh, disappear, uh, not one jot or line from the law, I'm, re I'm quoting from Matthew, will be taken away from God's commandments. Once you, people realize that the commandments are still in effect, the Sabbath was never changed, the holy holidays still matter, that you know God is the same today, tomorrow, and every day, they're like, wow, it's like a light bulb goes off. But then they're persecuted. And it, and the sad part about it is, you know, the persecution comes from, and I would have to say, 90% of the church. And, and I'm talking about the universal church all over the world. They're saying, calling people Judaizers, you're a legalist, and, I, and you're religious. And you know something? Yes, I am religious. Anybody who follows God's word is religious. And if you look at the word religious, I mean, we do this every day. Do you, are you, do you religiously pray to God every day? Of course you do. Do you yes. religiously want to read your scripture? M most people, yeah, of course. Of course they do. You know, do you, do, do you religiously go to God with all your problems and, and, and questions and, and things like, oh, God, please? Of course you do. You're religiously doing that. You know, do you religiously think about God? You know, I, 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 I got to tell you, you know, what God made good, man made bad. And what God made bad, man made good. You know, and, and you could see that in almost everything in every society today. What do you think, Ariel? Yes, I, I agree. Uh, there's so many things that, you know, the Bible speaks of, and yet everyone is doing the opposite. Or, or things that, that, you know, everybody is, is actually doing and has nowhere to be found in the scriptures. Right. And, you know, it just boggles the mind. And, and, and one of the things that I, I noticed is that even when you show people the truth, like you read, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something, anybody who knows me uh, personally and well, knows any of the teachings that I've ever done, know that 90% of what I'm saying, I'm reading it to you from the scripture, from the Bible, from the Hebrew scriptures and from the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, you know, and giving you my own commentary, you know, 
sometimes I will explain all what I just read in layman's terms because I just read it. And I mean, I'm not twisting it around. It's like saying the door was black and white with a purple handle. And somebody says, well, it's actually saying the door was purple, blue with a green handle. I mean, where do you get that from? You know, so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's I good, know. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my God, get it. Don't you get it? You want to just sit in the back of the night? Get it, get it, get it. You know, and, and that's one of the biggest problems we have in, you know, in the world yes. today, you know, yes, um, second Timothy. You know, that scripture, you know, uh, in the end days, people have itchy ears. I'm going to just give it to you verbatim. You know, uh, at the end and the end times, people have itchy ears. They'll go to hear preachers and teachers to uh, tell them what they want to hear, what fits their lifestyle. And they'll start to believe in myths instead of believing in truth. And we know what truth is definitely defined in the Bible. God's Torah is truth. You know, Psalms 119. I mean, you could go throughout the whole scripture when it speaks of truth. You know, but one of the biggest questions, Ariel, that I received um, was on the Sabbath, you know, and it's so surprising. You know, I do have a teaching on the Sabbath down below. But one of the biggest questions was, David, who changed the, Did Jesus change the Sabbath? The, uh, um, the, the Sabbath was changed. And, and, and I have to tell you, that is so far from the truth. Did Jesus change the Sabbath or was, uh, um, well, God changes, well, God changed the Sabbath and, you know, what, who changes that? Well, let's, let's, let, listen to what, uh, let me just pull my, the Bible verses out because, listen, like I say before, family, I only give to you uh, what it says, okay? Um, let's see what Yeshua said about abolishing God's commandments and having to do with the Shabbat. If you go to Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse 17, it says here, and this is, uh, Yeshua, the writer says that this is Yeshua. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law. Most uh, translations say law, but realistically, and a lot of some trans some translations say Torah, because law and Torah mean totally. Um, Torah means actually teachings and instructions, but they refer to God's Torah, His instructions, and commandments as law. So I'll read that again. I want the people to understand yes. that, of course, right. because that is that's one of the biggest. Uh, uh, um, how can I say confusions? Yeah. Is when people get so confused, you know, of tradition, law, commandments, law. You know, so I, I just really want to people to get a wind and understand that. But and here it says in uh, chapter five, verse seventeen: Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to give them full meaning. And some versions say. Uh, to fulfill, well, actually, if you look at the Greek translations, uh, to uh, uphold them, to give them full meaning, to uh, make you, uh, to help you understand what God is saying to you, okay? Understand that, because, you know, then, because a lot of people say to all be fulfilled, but then here, it, when people come up with that theology of, oh, see, it's fulfilled, then uh, Jesus says another thing, and I'm going to say Jesus instead of Yeshua so people don't get confused of who I'm speaking about, okay? Because I know there's another big controversy about the name, and we, that's a whole another that's a whole, that's a whole teaching in itself. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get, we'll get into that another time, but we'll get into that another time. But here in verse 18, it says, for truly now, if you look at scripture uh, in the context that it was written, and also in the translations, when they say truly, they're actually saying, so let it be, so be it. Like when you say, Omen. And most people don't know that when you say Omen, well, Amen, that is a Hebrew word for so let it be, so be it. You know, that was one of those words in Hebrew that you can't translate any other way but in Hebrew. Omen. So when, when, when Yeshua, when Jesus says truly, he's saying, so be it, so let it be. For truly, so be it. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one dot or mark will pass from the law until all come to pass or all happen or all has been accomplished will all be fulfilled. I gave you almost all the translations of that word because all has not been fulfilled. You know, people say, oh, this is, no, people stop spiritualizing everything in the Bible. There are things that are supposed to be spiritualized and there are things that are supposed to stay in the physical. If you spiritualize everything, you are taking away from what God is saying in his word. Do you not agree? Amen. Yes. I know, I'm doing a lot of talking here. No, that's, that's perfect. Yes! That's perfect. Yeah. But, no, but true. It, it's true. <laughs> so, Yeshua makes a statement, Jesus makes a statement saying that until heaven and earth disappear. Well, first of all, if you don't believe in heaven, you got to believe in earth because we're here and you're watching us, so we're still here, so earth is still here, so 
Of course. And that's one of the reasons what I love about the analogy that Jesus gave on this in this uh, Bible verse. And so heaven and earth, so because he knew that, hey, listen, in years to come, they're going to know. If he would just use an analogy of the time 2,000 years ago, we probably would say, what is he talking about? But no, heaven and earth. And then he says in verse 19, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of the commandments and teaches others to do likewise will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20, key verse. For I say unto you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness and the scribes and the Pharisees, you will no way enter into the kingdom of heaven, to God's kingdom. So right there and then, Jesus is saying what? I didn't come to do away with it. No, I came to teach it, okay? And if anybody teaches, listen, until heaven and earth, we're still here, right? The earth is still here, and we know heaven's for eternity, okay? So right then and there, family, we know for a fact that Jesus, Yeshua, did not come to change God's commandments. So, you know, we get to the next question. How did the Sabbath change? And, and but, but before I go further, how did the Sabbath change? I, I really want to do this where people are going to understand, because you and I spoke about this before. Yes. You know, when Jesus says, not even the least of the commandments, well, let me tell you something. The Sabbath is far from the least of the commandments. First of all, the Sabbath, okay. and we use the Sabbath because this is the question, but the Sabbath is the fourth commandment, okay? It's to remember, it's a two-parter, to remember and to keep. To remember to keep. So you have to remember it to keep it. You know, I made, I made a joke <laughs> last time. Uh, somebody asked me, so well, David, so see, I, I keep the Sabbath and I, and I don't remember. <laughs> this is <laughs> but it. Was, that was kind yes. of funny. But yeah. At the time, it was a lot funnier. We left. But how could people say, you know, uh, that, that the Sabbath has to do with creation? And also, it's a sign between man and God. Go to Ezekiel 20, 20 or Exodus 31, uh, 17. When you keep the Shabbat, you're showing the world the connection between man and God. Go to those scriptures. You'll find them. Again, that's Ezekiel 20, 20 and Exodus 31, 17. It's a sign. Now, let me tell you something. Anybody who is following what Jesus taught, you know, about keeping commandments, about God, I mean, you want people to know that's a sign. What God do you serve? You know, the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. But let me, let me show you this here. Um, how serious God takes the Sabbath. Yes. Okay. If you go to Exodus 31, uh, 14 to 15, and I'm going to read these versions, believe me, uh, anything that I'm reading from the Hebrew Scriptures, the Tanakh, and I know some of you refer to the Old Testament, um, that was given to uh, the name the Old Testament by Gentiles. It, it was never called the Old Testament. It's always been called the Hebrew Scriptures, the Tanakh. Never was changed. A man changed and gave it another name. Um, but I'm going to read to you out of the uh, MEV version, which is one of the common versions you would find in a hotel room. And, and, and I say hotel because they used to keep Bibles in hotel rooms because it's, you know, or RSV version with a new revised standard version or in a church or any place you would see a Bible that, you know, for the public to read. This is one of those versions that you would see. So that's what I want to do. I want to stick to a version that people are going to more be able to comprehend with. You agree? Amen. Okay. Yes. Maybe I'll let you read it. <laughs> um, Exodus uh, 31, 14 to 15 says, you shall keep the Sabbath for it is a holy unto you, for it is holy to you. Everyone who defies will surely be put to death. Listen to how serious God takes the Shabbat. For whoever doesn't work on it, that person will be cut off from among his people. But six days will work will be done. And on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the complete rest. Holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath will surely be put to death. I mean, look, wow. family, this is how serious, I mean, how how serious God takes the Sabbath. Now, I, and, you know, some people say, well, you know, that was Old Testament. You know, I always say that. But let me tell you something. This is where the commandments were being established through uh, the nation of Israel. So, and, and, and it says also in the, in the, in the Torah and in, in the first five books that, you know, listen, this is forever and ever, Le'olam Va'ed, from generation to generation, which means continuous. It never ends. It goes on, on and on. And like Jesus himself said in Matthew, yes. and so heaven and earth disappear, go away. And we're still here. Heaven and earth did not disappear. Amen. You know. Right, you know, uh, yeah, sorry. But, uh, no, don't. Not just like uh, uh, Yahshua Jesus said uh, in Mark 2.27. 
uh, you know, the Sabbath was made, you know. When you played the scriptures. Men, yes. And men, you also, and men, what was that other scripture you quoted too? Uh, what was it last night at Shabbos? Uh, Hebrews. Yes. Hebrews, yes. My wife. God bless her. Yeah, <laughs> God bless her. You know, yeah. another, another scripture in and, and Hebrews. Um, do, you, do you remember that one offhand? I think, I think it's it. Hebrews 14, 9, 11 or Hebrews 4. 9 through 11? I think you might be right, but you know what? I want to... But, get, yes, get, get, get. <laughs> but just like... Uh, yeah, Hebrews, four, actually, it was Hebrews chapter 4, four verse 9, 9 through 11. 11. Yes, yeah, see? And, uh, uh, but Mark two twenty seven, 27, uh, Yeshua says, uh, you know, God made uh, the Sabbath for men, not man for the Sabbath. Who made the Sabbath? God. That's how serious it is. It's, he's still saying it then, too. Yeah. Well, and, and Ariel is absolutely, I mean, listen, let, let's face it. And, you know, and these, uh, the New Testament, basically, they were letters, you know, written. And, you know, and, you know, people like to change things around to meet their needs as, you know, yes. and some and some and some of the letters, you know, I don't think they could change around and doctrinate and, you know, make it to sound what they want it to sound like. But one of the biggest scriptures I get, and please, listen, I'm leading up to this changing of the Sabbath, but I have to give you this full analogy of it because so you really comprehend it and understand it. But, you know, some people reference Acts uh, 27 when Shaul Paul, excuse me, Paul, I'll say his Goyesha name. Oh, and that's another thing. Paul never changed his name from Paul to Shaul. You know, Jews have two names, one Hebrew and one um, Gentile or one American or one wherever they're from. You know, in the 12th century, if you do your studies, the rabbis of the day thought it was essential that Jewish people, especially living outside of Israel, would have two names. One name to fit the surroundings that they were in and also the Hebrew name. So in my household, uh, everybody has a Hebrew name, except for me. I was the only one that got it. Yeah, my name is David, but my mother loved the name uh, David so much. And she felt, oh, you know, I feel God wants me to call you by your Hebrew name, uh, the translation of David. So my Hebrew name is David. Uh, David and my English name is David. So I like David. David, uh, that's my Yiddish name. Yes. So basically, I, my, my, uh, I got the same name, but you know what? I'm not complaining. I like the name David. It's okay. Uh, yeah. King David, who was a great uh, Malach David, yeah. showed us how hard it is to be a king. Okay, and a leader, uh, of course. But some people reference uh, uh, Acts 29. Uh, when Paul spoke to the disciples on the first day of the week. And I, and I want to read that to you right now. Acts 20, uh, chapter uh, 20, excuse me, uh, verse 6 through 7. But we sailed from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. Now, it shows you that Shaul was keeping the feast of oh. unleavened bread. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. And you know what? <laughs> when, you, oh my, when you say amen, it goes down a lot zisa, a lot sweeter, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I didn't know what to say that, really? Okay. Well, well, and, and, and if you want to know the, where the Feast of Unleavened Bread is, you could go to Leviticus 23, 6, and you could find it there uh, in, in the Torah. But it says here again, verse 6 in Acts 20, it says, But we sailed from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, showing that Shaul did, Paul did celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And in five days, we came to Treos where we stayed for seven days. And verse seven, on the first day of the week, on the first day, now remember, God numbers the days. The Sabbath is the only day to have a name. And you'll see where I'm going with that in a minute. On the first day of the week, when we gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. Now notice that in this here, there's no mentioning of the change of the Sabbath. So there's no change of the Sabbath. I, I, and if those of you know, I'm turning pages here. Well, I print out the Bible uh, uh, pages so I read exactly from Scripture and I don't make it up, okay? Um, so you notice that Paul didn't mention anything about changing the, sh the Shabbat. Nothing about sh the Shabbos. And they met on the first day of the week. Well, first of all, there's no commandment in the Bible that says you have to meet on the first day of the week, number one. Number two, Jews meet daily. People meet daily all the time at people's shop on the first day of the week. And here I have another scripture, Acts 2, uh, Acts 2, chapter 2, verse 46, to show you. And continuing daily on one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they took their food with gladness and, simplify, and uh, simplicity of heart. Daily. So... Meeting on the first day of the week was no big deal because it's done all the time. And in the Jewish Jewish people, you'll notice if anybody goes into a Jewish neighborhood, um, we they break bread and meet daily. Food is a very big part of of, <laughs> of our way of thinking. Okay, we love eating food, but kosher food, of course. 
what, what God yes. considers food. But so you see, and then um, the Bereans, and also to the Bereans, um, I, I wrote that down. Why? Because when Paul was going to minister over there, you know, in Berea, you have to understand one thing too, that the Bereans were noble Jews. Now, if you read this in Acts, you'll see in Acts 17, 11, you'll notice that Bereans would study the Torah night and day, like going, they would go to basically like the, the local yeshiva to study Torah and to understand God's word. And especially when Paul or anybody that was a disciple of Jesus would come to town, they would go check on them to see if they what they were saying was correct. And what would they be saying? They would be talking about what? The Torah, God's instructions on, on life, on high, just as Yeshua, uh, Jesus did. Okay, so you see that on the first day of the week was nothing big. You know, first of all, it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, uh, commanded day number one, and it was done daily. Okay, and Acts two, uh, chapter two, verse forty six, you'll see where it was done daily. You know, and and I mean, come on, how many times have you heard that? Oh, yeah, they changed it. I mean, yes. Paul didn't yeah, change yeah. nothing. Paul had no authority to change anything no from one, the no Hebrew scripture. No one does. You know, and anybody says Paul had to, no, Paul had no authority to change it. Remember when he went to James and, you know, in Acts and he said to James, you know, James said, to him, what is this we hear that you're teaching the Jewish people not to circumcise their children, not to follow God's commandments? And Paul's reaction is, no, God forbid, may it not be. I didn't do it. And he had to go sacrifice because he was following what? The Nazarite vow. And that's in the Bible as well, in the Torah. He was following an Azurite vow. So what did, what did James, the brother of Jesus, said? Well, go to the temple, sacrifice country, meaning you're going to start over the vow, and pay for the other ones to do to, to start the vow over. So not only did Paul do a sacrifice by shaving his head, but he also paid for the sacrifice of the other priests that were going there, the other uh, um, uh, people that were making the Nazarene vow. Right. So, you know, hey, you know, listen, don't don't twist the scriptures around because it's not going to work. You know, if you go to scripture, you can say, I, I didn't read that. Now, uh, the Sabbath is the only day is the Sabbath day. Any day we choose. <laughs> I mean, I heard that. Oh, this is my Sabbath day. Listen, and I'm not poking fun. And I real let, mm -hmm. one thing we're not poking fun at anybody. Mm -hmm. We're not here to bash anybody. Let me just look at our where oh, we're doing very well. Um, I'm just looking at the time family. Um but we, you know, we're not here to bash anybody and to make fun, we'll poke fun at anybody. But, you know, if I could give a little light to uh, what were, were the questions and, and the reasoning behind this, I'm going to do that 100% of the time because we do love you. Uh, everybody here at Jewish Eyes, we love every one of you. We, we want to make sure that everybody knows the truth. But God, uh, you can't choose the day and it was never changed. And <laughs> God did not change the Sabbath because, first of all, God made the seventh day, the seventh day holy and i'm going to go to it from the beginning this is not a new commandment but this is an old one you have you heard that one before of course you did of course you did of course okay uh where does it say that in genesis brigitte in hebrew chapter 2 verse 3 and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it because in it he had rested from all his work and god create from what god created and made so let me read that again the seventh day God spoke on the seventh day and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Sanctification, sanctified. If you look up the word sanctified, it set means apart. To set apart. <laughs> yeah, to set apart. He's <laughs> right. To set apart. Absolutely. No, but you know, we always talk about that, right, Ariel? Yes. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, I get a, a lot of questions about sanctification. And when people use it in the wrong uh, 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 terminology, the, the, the wrong term, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know what you just said? Sancti do you know what sanctifies mean? You know what to sanctify? You know, anytime you sanctify something, right, it has, there has to be more than two parties. So, and, and it's a, to set a what? To set apart. Oh, man. To set apart. Just like certain foods. Set apart. <laughs> I couldn't have said it any better. Um, and I, I can't really because it says yeah, it here. <laughs> and God blessed the seventh day and sanctify it, which means he set it apart. And let's go to the next scripture that I have here. And what does it say? Well, let me just remove these here. Don't get confused. Okay. Leviticus 23.3 says this. Six days you shall... Wait, excuse me. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. Look up that word too, people, if you don't know what that means. 
You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath unto the Lord in all your dwelling places. So right then and there, God gave the Sabbath day a name. A name. And here we go. The only day of the week. And I'm going to read this scripture here to you. The only day of the week that God actually named. Because listen, it wasn't until after the Babylonian captivity of the Jews where they started giving mixing of the Babylonian names with like Tishra, Nisan uh, being first and seven. But actually, if you read the first part, now I know that the uh, the Tanakh Hebrew scriptures into most people, the Old Testament was taken out of the chronological order that it was originally put in. Um, and I know it can be confusing, um, but if you look at scripture in the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, the, the Nisan and Tisha, the names, uh, uh, the, in Hebrew didn't start coming to more towards the middle of, of, of the, of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible. But if you look in the beginning, especially in the first five books, you'll notice that God only referred to every day as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on the seventh day, he called the Sabbath. And it says here in Exodus 20, 9 through 11. Did I say that good? Do you think yes. they understand what I said to yes, them? Yes, I'm sure they did. I hope they did. Six days you are to labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You do not do any work, neither you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male or f- a female servant, which people I mean you, the people who work with you, work for you, nor your livestock, nor your foreigner. El Goim, the stranger who uh, lives among you, because the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them in six days. Then he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord had blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Now, I know a lot of people read that scripture. But if you really read that scripture... And hopefully the, the spirit, the, the, the Ruch HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will be dwelling within you. You'll notice how serious that the seventh day, the Sabbath day is to God. And it never changes. And we're going to get to that too. How God never changes. We are going to get to that. He's so, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen, brother. So, God chose the seventh day as the Sabbath day. And he gave it a name. The Sabbath day. So who are we, who is anybody, to change God's word? You know, and and I'm going to tell you something. In the last maybe 35 years of studying scripture in Hebrew, Greek, and different languages, and understanding what what the word is saying, you know, and listen, of course I'm Jewish and I've studied it in Hebrew, uh, realizing that how people change reword, take things out, and, 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 and it's, it's sad because we have no authority at all to change any of God's word. And if anybody says that they have the authority to do that, run fast as you can away from that person or that, that, that whatever it is, that, that, that group of people because God is the same today, tomorrow, and every day, and we're going to get to that. So who changed it? The big question. And this is how I lead up to it because you have to know the history behind it as well. Well, who changed it? Well, the first day of rest was given by Constantine in AD 321. And the day he wrote a law for it and it was a Sunday. You know, now, most people don't know this, but Constantine was a big sun, Sunday sun worship. Sun worship. Sun. <laughs> but he was a big sun worship. But his law actually in AD 321 says this. Constantine's law was issued AD 321 and it follows. Let all judges and townspeople and the occupation of all trades rest on the variable day of the sun. I mean... It says it right there in his law. But let those who are situated in the country freely and full liberty attend the business of agriculture. Now, you got to remember, agriculture is food. That, you know, it's, you know, you need food. And, and, and basically, you know, he's like saying, okay, well, don't work on, on Sunday if you can't. If you, God says don't work, period. And he says, and he changed it's the worship day to Sunday. Now, people, I'm not, listen, we could give you a full history on Constantine, but that's not for today. That's for another day, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it says here, the business of agriculture, because it, ha- it often happens that no other day can be so fit for growing corn and planting vines. He says it there. So, you know, he's talking about food, corn and vines. Least the critical moment, let slip men should lose the commodities Granted by heaven, 
So in layman's terms, what he's saying, did, did I say that correctly? Did I okay, understand? In layman's terms, what I just read to you, so you're not confused by his law, he's saying he doesn't, if you're sowing seed, the harvest is coming out on the on the first day, which is the first day of the week in the Bible, Sunday. You know, he says, don't let, you know, uh, the gift of heaven run away. Let's grab onto it. And in that aspect, he's right because it's not the Sabbath day. So, of course, it's going to be blessed to go to work on the, on the Sunday, on the seventh day, because it's the first day of the week biblically. Okay? So, there you have it on that, on that end. So, that's the first, as we know, the decree, which, you know, decrees are never changed back on, wow, well, the, the fans are blowing hard today, um, where it wasn't changed, where Constantine actually changed it the worship, the day of worship, because he made the Christian um, faith um, the, the national religion, basically. Um, but there you have it. That's the first site of the changing of, of the Sabbath day. But now we go to AD 325 of the Council of Laodicea and the Roman Church. <laughs> and this is where you have it. Now, the Church of uh, Laodicea and the Council, and uh, what is it, uh, 325 AD wrote out the canon. Now, this wasn't the first canon, um, grant you. Um, the first canon, oh, the wind is blowing, thank you, Ariel. I got the fan blowing right on top of me here. Excellent. Um, the first the first canon, I actually, I have it written down, the first canon was the moratorium canon applied in AD 170, which, which included all the New Testament books except for Hebrews, James, uh, uh, Third John, the Council of Laodicea, and AD three uh, uh, AD three sixty three concluded that the only uh, the, uh, excuse me that only the Old Testament, along with the Apocrypha, uh, and the, uh, and the twenty seven books of the New Testament were to be read in churches. And the Council's Hippo in uh, AD three ninety. So I mean, and Carthage in uh, AD three ninety seven. I could go on and on and on, but. That's a, just a little bit of a rundown on what the canon was, and I don't want to get too much into that because, you know, uh, I'll let you do your own research on it. And I also have a lot of news clips from the Jerusalem Post. But what does it exactly say in the canon? <laughs> this is interesting. And, and, and this is where um, a lot of people get a little bit. Let me just make sure I got all my notes here. Yeah. This is where uh, people get thrown off. Okay. What does it say in the canon? Well, in the canon, it says this. Let's read from 29. Christians, canon 29 says, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday. What? What did I just mm -hmm. say? Okay, wait. The canon. Now, this is the Church of Laodicea, which is the Christian church, and the Roman church, which is the Catholic church. Okay? Not throwing stones, but it says here in the canon, Christians should not Judaize, canon 29, and be idle on Saturday but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day, they shall especially honor. And be and as being Christians, should it be possible, should it be possible, do not work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they will be cut, they will be shut off, cut, basically cut out, cut off from Christ. Wow. So the canon says, the Christian and the Catholic canon says that you're not to rest on the day that God chose to be the Sabbath. You're, su you're supposed to work. And if you caught Judaizing and keeping it, you'll be cut off from Christ. Now, who gives them the authority to say that? Okay. Canon 37 says this. No one shall accept festive presents from Jews and heretics or keep festivals with them. So this, the canon is referring to Jews and as heretics and heretics they're putting the Jews, Jewish people in heretics is that anti-semitic you think yes okay very um not done yet of, of course, course i'm not, not. <laughs> 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 of course i'm not done yet kind of 37 it is not lawful to receive portions from feast of the Jews or her I read that already or heretics okay canon 38 it is not lawful <laughs> this is another thing now, we just read in, 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 in Acts that Paul celebrated the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Well, here it says in your canon, canon 38, it is not lawful to receive unleavened bread from the Jews, nor be partakers in their impurity. Wow. I mean, 
I'm not making this up, man. Like, mm -hmm. I'm reading this right from the canon. Um, so, if you're reading anything written by Shaul or Paul, you're not supposed to. Because, you know, he partakes in... Against, it's, it's against, against their rules? It's against the rules. Wow. Okay, so, I, I always got to save the, the best bad news for the <laughs> last. Okay, now, if you go to the Converts Catechism of the Catholic Doctrine... And you go to page 50. Now, you know, Christians and Catholics, don't listen, I love my Catholic brothers and I love my Christian brothers and sisters, please. But being a Christian, you're part of the Protestant movement started by an anti-Semite called Martin Luther who hated Jews. Okay, we all know that. Do your history on that too. Please don't be an apologist when it comes to Martin Luther because it's insulting. Um, and I mean that full heartedly and I love you still, but please. But if you look up the word that... If you're part of the Protestant movement, right, it's basically against Catholic uh, doctrine, Catholic beliefs, you know, and, and I'm not, listen, I'm just being honest about that. Uh, so if you're part of the Protestant movement, but if you look at the Protestant Protestants and you look at the Catholics and the, and, and the Catholics, now you got to remember, Catholics were here way before Christians, you know, I mean, realistic from the Protestant movement was actually started during the Martin Luther times. So, you know, you have to look, understand that, but don't you listen, don't yell Catholic people either because Catholics consider themselves Christians, Christ-like. So, you know, you please, you know, th there's a war between them, you know, and I, this is another thing that I, I have a very hard time understanding. So please, you know, um, you know, send your emails in. I know there's going to be, and, and, you know, usually when we get these re uh, uh, replies on what we're answering, well, what I answer during the times I do Facebook Live, you know, it's, I would have to say, God is blessing, 90% of them, 85% of them have been good, and the rest of them can be a little shaky. But, you know, if the Protestants are supposed to be different than the Catholic people, you know, uh, when it comes to doctrine and belief structure, if you look at the belief structure, uh, almost it's parallel, except for certain things, okay? But here it says in the Converts Catechism of the Catholic Doctrine, on uh, page 50, it says this, question, which is the Sabbath day? You know, because people want to know, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. They gave the honest answer, and this is, I have to give this, the, the catechism, the convert's catechism, uh, uh, a thumbs up on that part. Uh, read again, question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Whoa! Now, most people don't even know that, but it's history, and please go find it too, because history is lately, and the society we live in is being erased. Okay, so there you have it. The church changed the, the Sabbath. It wasn't God who changed the Sabbath. God doesn't change. Um, and let me let me read. Uh, let me let me read here from Deuteronomy chapter four, verse um, one through uh, two here. Um, when you read the scripture, I'm not telling you a, a new commandment, but an old one. Listen, now, therefore, listen, O Israel, to the statutes and the judgments which I am teaching you to do, so that you may live. You may live. Life is in the word. I mean, I, I mean how many Christians do I say that? Life is in the word. Of course it is. You may live and go and possess the land in which the Lord has, and fathers is giving you. You shall not add... Verse 2, you shall not add to the word which I am commanding you, nor take away from it, so that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. And it's so funny because when you go to Revelations, right, it says here, where did they get it from? Of course, Deuteronomy. It says here, Revelations 22, 19 through uh, 18 through 19, I give you fair warning to all those who hear the words of this prophecy of this book. If you add to the words of this prophecy, God will add to your life the, the disasters which is written in this book. And if you subtract from the words of this book and the prophecy, God will subtract your name from the tree of life and the holy city where the book is written. Wait a minute. Doesn't it also say in Revelations? What does it say in Revelations about keeping commandments? Keep the commandments so that you have the right to the tree of life and that you may enter into the new city, into the city. Excuse me. Amen. So Revelations is saying, keep the commandments, God's commandments. So that's a, another big contradiction that you hear all the time. Now, last but not least, 
let me look. We're good. Last but not least. Yes. I'm looking bit. at the time a little bit. Last but not least. Does God change or does God's word change? No. It doesn't change. Come on, man. I mean, and, and listen, most Christians I know always say, God doesn't change. Well, no, so well here, I'm going to go to Malachi. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, O sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. I am the Lord, I do not change. Listen, you believe in the, the Hebrew Scriptures, the, the Old Testament? Okay, Numbers 23, 19. Oh, no, here comes a bomb. God is not a man that he should lie, or the son of man that he should change his mind. What does that say? Mm -hmm. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. People, I'm reading this right yeah, from it's right there, right from the word. And uh, I could just give a little reference here in the book of Yaakov, James chapter one, verse 19. And this is one of those books that Martin Luther, Martin Luther, who a lot of people idolize, wanted to take the book of James out of the New Testament, out of the bread, out of the shah, because he referred to the brother of Jesus' book as a book of straw, like it was worthless. And, and he wanted to take out Hebrews. He wanted to take out Revelation. I mean, he wanted to take out a lot of stuff. So before you start idolizing somebody and, and, and looking at them as a hero uh, of your movement, do some research on this hero, okay? Hitler quoted Martin Luther. What do we do with these dirty dogs, the Jews? Who wrote that? Well, Hitler said that, of course, but who wrote that? Martin Luther in one of his books. Read it, find it, you'll see it. Baruch Hashem. But uh, James, one of the books that Martin Luther wanted to get uh, take away from, James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes from the Father of light with whom no change or shadow of turning. Oh my goodness. So James, Yaakov, the brother of Jesus, is saying that every good gift, perfect gift, comes from above, comes from God. He doesn't say it comes from Jesus, because he would have said it comes from Jesus. No, he said comes from the Father. This is the brother. This is the brother. He said it comes from God, the Father. And it says here, whom God, there is no change nor shadow of turning. So not only does God does not change, but he's even saying his shadow doesn't even change. Wow. So there you have it. The Sabbath day was changed by the church. And last but not least, and I'm surely not least, Yesiyahu, one of our favorite friends' his name. Yesiyahu, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God will stand forever. And if, and, 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 oh, I even put the Bereans over here. I, 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 I copied down the uh, Acts chapter 17, 11 on the Bereans on checking Paul and making sure that he was teaching Torah. Okay. So if you want to check that, go to Acts chapter 17. Um, but to conclude this today, listen, family, we're not here to, to, to bash anybody and to hurt anybody's feelings, but to speak the truth. And the whole thing is to a lot of people out there, they were so afraid because, uh, as Yeshua quoted uh, in the book of Matthew, Matthew, he says, the road to destruction is wide and easy. And if you look at the true translation of that, almost everybody on the earth jumps on that road because it's easy. But the road to high to life is hard and narrow. And very, very few people find it. We all have heard that scripture before. And that tells me something totally different than what you see in today's population, that not everybody says, oh, I'm going to heaven, is actually going to go because they're not fine. What does Yeshua say? Yeshua quotes, he says, listen, flee from me. I never knew you, you who breaks God's commandments. But they say, but I prophesied in your name. I did marvelous miracles in your name. And he says, I never knew you. You broke the commandments. Oh, who are you? You know, so listen, family. To all those people out there that are so afraid to make that leap, to following God's commandments on a holy life, on how to have a relationship. Listen, the book of John, listen, I'm not even going to go into the Hebrew scriptures, but the book of John says the only way to show God love is what? To keep his commandments. Right. And the person who says they have God in them and is doesn't it, keep the commandments, what does it say? Is a liar. And the truth is? Is not in him. And, and also it's says, in yeah, <laughs> but also says, but also says this is not a new commandment, but it's a. It's old. It's the one from that you heard from the beginning. 
What are the first two most important commandments? So I feel like we're doing things like that. What are the first two important commandments? Love your God. Speak up, man. Let them yeah. hear you. Love your God with all body, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Listen, those are not the only two commandments, no. but those are the two most important commandments that the two commandments, that all the commandments are hung on. And, and yes. you know, where did, now we know it says it in the bird of the shadow, mm -hmm. but where did they get that from? They got it from Deuteronomy. They got it from the Torah. It says that in the Torah too. Yes. Of course it does. Because let's face it, family, if you love God with all your heart, mind, nice, spirit, man. and soul, and love your neighbor yourself, so if you love God with everything you have, all the chutzpah that you have, you're going to listen to what he says. And Yeshua always referred to God's commandment as the word of God. Go to Matthew. You could read it there for yourself. It's there for those who, if you have to see it to believe it, we'll go to Matthew and you'll see what Yeshua says about that. Yes. And then loving your neighbor as yourself. So if you love God with everything, you're going to follow his word. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you won't have a problem. You know, we, if we love our people like we love ourselves, and we're supposed to love ourselves, you know, I, that's another thing. Oh, don't love yourself. Well, it says love yourself. Why would God say love yourself? Because if, how can you show another person love if you don't care for yourself? You don't, you got to have some kind of love. You know, God loves you. So, you know, why would you hate yourself, right? Mm -hmm. right? So the two commandments are written on uh, all, all, all the 613 mitzvot uh, basically hung on those two. Love God with everything that you have and love your brother. And who's your neighbor? Anybody who doesn't live with you, man. Right, brother? Mm -hmm. Amen. And, you know, and, and listen, last I did most of the talking today, but I have to say one thing. I love my brother, Ari. I love him being here and being part of it. And we have so many other people in through Jewish eyes, you know, that will, you know, will eventually come on. We're going to start doing some filming outside of our the studio here. Um, we're going to be also doing interviews as well. We're going to do a lot. And I'm, I'm pleased, family. I know I got a lot of emails on going back to a lot of the, the instructional um, teachings that I do on uh, God's Word on Saturday. Yes, I will be doing that too. But, you know, listen, we want to show the world everything you know, every aspect of God's word and what it's doing in the people's lives. And, you know, when find the Bible says the truth will set you free, but you know, most, most non-Jewish people, listen, I deal with 90% of the people are not Jewish that I deal with in ministry. And, and, and I have to say one thing, you know, the biggest question, the, the biggest response when I ask a non-Jew is like, do you feel free after following God's commandments, what Yeshua said, mm -hmm. Jesus said, and the, the very, I, I mean, <laughs> very it's like, you know what? Yeah, and you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna throw it back at you. You know, there, there's, a, there, there is a saying. You know, so if I'm wrong, what did you do? You lived a holy life, okay? You know that old saying. So you know, people minister, you know, accept Jesus into their heart. You know, but, but hey, say I'm wrong. At least you lived a holy life on, at least your good life on there. Well, okay, say you think I'm wrong. What did you do wrong by following what Yeshua, what Jesus told you to do by following God's commandments? You ate, you ate what God considered food. You loved your neighbor as yourself. You followed the commandments. You did all the holy days that all the disciples did, that all the prophets and, 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 and the scribes did before you. Remember, Yeshua says, your righteousness has to succeed theirs. <laughs> and how is this supposed to succeed? Listen, I think Yeshua was a lot more strict than, 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 than a lot of the prophets in the Old Testament and then the Hebrew Scriptures. Why? Because he said, even if you think it, you've done it. So, I mean, you know, I don't know how it got so watered down. Of course I do, but I know it is what it is. Listen, family, we love you. And, 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 and if you have any questions you want to throw it, please uh, continue to write me and send those emails to, to Jewish Eyes. Uh, and I know a lot of people uh, send it to my other email address is uh, on my Facebook page. Wherever you want to send it, uh, that's fine. Please, uh, we want to connect. If you have a question you want answered online, uh, we'll be doing that live, ex ex especially on Facebook. I mean, on uh, uh, YouTube as well. So please continue. We love you, family. And, and like I said before, if you're interested in uh, learning more about through Jewish eyes and what we're about, and and you know, finding out about us, you know, personally and what we believe in this and that, please go to throughjewisheyes.org. Or if you want to financially help us uh, support this ministry, and to those of you who do, we love you. God bless you. Uh, you know, our love for you is is strong. And help us uh, um, um, hold this ministry up here because we're we're in Israel as well, please go to thejewishize.org and your prayers count and matter to us as well, please, family. But until next time, Ariel, may the right hand of God be upon your lives. May his light be so bright upon you that you never walk astray. Until next time, family, we love you. God bless you. Shabbat shalom. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your family. But most importantly, enjoy God. Understand who he is, who Messiah is. We love you.
Thank you. And give all glory to God. God bless. Baruch Hashem. Shabbat Shalom.